we are very aware that this is a highly topical and controversial subject. So please do share your questions in advance. Um, put them in the comments. We also had some running in our stories. So we were able to get some from you in advance, but get your thinking caps on and send them in because we really want to have some good questions from you all to share at the end of the session. Indeed. So before we get going, Rosanna, let me ask you first this time because um, I always tend to go first. What's most inspired you this week? So this week, this is actually um, a little bit of an insider track for everybody watching this live. Um, our next speaker for Fashmash Pioneers, I can reveal today, he is going to be Mark Jacques Burton, the brilliant creative director of the British streetwear brand that is made in Milan. It was established in 2015. Um, and we're going to be speaking to him on Tuesday, December the 8th at 5.30. So mark the dates for your diary. I mm. went on a socially distanced walk with him this past Saturday. And he is, I think, like any pioneer, he just thinks 10 years ahead, five years ahead. So he really challenged my thinking. Um, and he made me see streetwear in a new light. But he also made me realise that I think the uh, impression and traditional out, um, view of fashion that I've had that is one that's been perpetuated by glossy magazines since the 80s is flipping on its head and it's going to keep going further and further that way. You know, take Matthew Williams, take Virgil Abloh, like this is just the beginning. And actually the Central St. Martins Fashion Week and then creative director of a big luxury brand traditional model is changing before our very eyes and we need to be I think for too long streetwear has probably been siloed and and it's not in that place anymore in any yeah. way thank you very much Hannah for sharing his link um so yeah it'll be a fascinating conversation and it, it made me it blew my mind slightly I've been thinking about it ever since um his brand has been worn by everyone from Gigi Hadid to Will I Am uh, to whiz kids go check him out and i'd love to see lots of you there on the 8th of december we'll be putting tickets on release later this week rachel how about you what's been inspiring you well i mean first of all i'm so excited about that conversation it's such a different angle for us and, and really actually an area of the industry that we haven't actually talked about at all before yeah. in any of our pioneer sessions so yeah it should be really really good and i agree with you like i think besides anything for me tons to learn so i, I can't wait to hear him speak um my inspiration. So there was a really incredible story in the Sunday Times yesterday, which I'm sure many people saw already. And if you didn't, I do highly recommend it. It was an interview with Anders Polverson, who is the Danish entrepreneur, who is the owner of Bestseller. Um, but he's also, and lots of people don't know this, he's also the UK's largest landowner. So he owns 230,000 acres in the UK. Um, and the story in the paper was about the fact that he's on this mission to rewild much of Scotland. Um, it's a 200 year plan and he says it's to allow native woodland and species to regenerate and flourish. Um, so really, really incredible read. Um, lots of people will know his name, not just for being the, the founder of Bestseller, but also for the fact that he tragically lost three of his four children in the Sri Lankan terror attacks last year. Um, and this story is, I guess, a really positive, they, they touch on that, although he doesn't, didn't want to talk about it, they do, they do reflect on it and he reflects on it. And it, it really is, I guess, a positive view on his purpose and, and something that was, that's always been there with his focus on nature, but um, seemingly, you know, he's focusing on it a lot, a lot more than ever now. So it really puts things into a lot of perspective and it's a, it's a really worthy Sunday or indeed now Monday read. So highly recommend that one and I'll get Hannah to share that link. So let's, um, let's dive in. Rosanna, you are going to set the scene a little bit for us, I believe. Yeah, let's do a little bit of some uh, some statistics to blow your mind, just like my Saturday walk blew my <laughs> mind a little bit. So, um, as Rachel, Rachel already mentioned, this is one of the most, well, no, the most controversial topic we've covered in a live since mm -hmm. we began our lives. I think this is now our 11th. Let's start with some statistics, courtesy of our sponsor, Clavio. How big will the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period be this year? $51.1 billion, which in Great British Pounds is 40 billion. The expected 2020 e-commerce sales is projected by Clavio to be $1.1 trillion, globally that is. 
And then overall, Clavio are predicting this is going to be the biggest Black Friday ever. And this is in the year of the pandemic and everything else that 2020 <laughs> has made itself thoroughly memorable for. Why? Well, first of all, store closures and the lockdown 2.0 or whatever we're calling it, that has seen a pivot to online sales. Um, so e-commerce is booming. There's no other way to, to around it. Um, Clavio research shows that 90% of consumers are now shopping online compared to 70% at the start of the pandemic, which I found a really interesting comparison. Um, we therefore felt compelled to take our statistics to our community. And last night I put out some really fascinating polls on our Instagram stories on Fashmash. These results are such a good kicking off point for this conversation. So first up, the one I found most striking of all, they are completely split down the middle on this starting one. When it comes to sustainability, I asked everybody, Black Friday means 49% chose survival for retail, 51% chose disaster for the planet. So that is a complete split. I mean, there's 1% in it. If I check again now, it'll probably be a flip the other way. Then through a marketing lens, I asked everybody, Black Friday, does it drive loyalty or does it devalue brands? 81% said that it actually devalued brands. From a personal perspective, I asked everybody, what will they be doing on Black Friday? 60% said they would be shopping online, while 40% said they'll be avoiding completely. So despite the sustainability 50-50 split, there is an undeniable charge towards those bargains. They're irresistible. And then finally, on its future, I asked everybody, Black Friday should die or develop? 54% <laughs> said it needs to develop. 46% said it should die. So they probably don't want to listen to the rest of this conversation. <laughs> Rachel, what are your thoughts on those, those really, I love it when you get powerful statistics from our community. I know you did such a good job of that. It's so interesting, isn't it? I mean, I think that split there of people who want it to, be to develop and people who, or to die, obviously, people who think it's bad for the planet, people who really heavily believe it's going to devalue the brand. And yet from a personal perspective, 60% of us are going to shop it which in so many ways, I think, just says it all. It says it all. It's so interesting. I think from my point of view, interestingly, and it's probably quite important to say, what I think is really fascinating at the moment about a lot of the coverage around this is that there are many, many different thoughts about the actual predictions themselves. So it seems like no one is really particularly sure about what is actually going to happen this year and how it's going to go. So with my sustainability hat on, which obviously we will come back to in depth on this subject, I sadly think that we will see huge numbers in the same way that Clavio has suggested. But a lot of the other forecasts are actually saying that there may be a contraction on last year. So I don't know, is that because consumers are more wary of, of, because of everything going on? Are they still not as au fait across the board with online shopping, which of course may well be the case if you look at the typical Black Friday shopper, if there is one indeed. Um, are we being more considered with our purchases because of the sustainability, sustainability messages that we've been seeing round home and of course our sort of different approach to consumerism this year through lockdowns? Yeah, all sorts of different questions I think come up here. So it's going to be fascinating to see which way it plays out and actually, you know, what does genuinely, you know, what do the numbers look like at the end of the day, basically, or at the end of this period? Um, Either way, I think uh, the Business of Fashion have gone, done some really interesting coverage of this, as always. They say that the stakes are seriously high this year for retailers to get it right. And I'm just going to quote, after a dismal 2020, few brands can afford to be left with mountains of unsold inventory in January or to miss out on sales due to short shortages. The worst off need strong holiday sales if they're to survive in 2021 at all. And I know you're going to obviously talk about that survival part of all of this equation in a moment. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is that what is definitely clear is that everyone is seriously trying to shift stuff on the base on that basis this summer. You know, everybody's got so much excess stock because of the fact that, you know, we have seen a real decline this year. So sales are everywhere. You cannot miss them. My phone literally every few minutes is getting some sort of notification, probably because because of my job, I've signed up to like literally everything. So I see what's going on. So, so many notifications, so many emails in my inbox, all offering discounts and sales absolutely everywhere and obviously usually the aim of that is to try and draw people you know into the stores as we know normally the majority of sales have happened in that space um 
and obviously that this year that's not it's not the case for this particular week anyway obviously in the uk stores are now supposed to be opening again next week but during black friday itself they will they will be closed so online is the only option so it's really about grabbing that online share of voice and and it's really noisy it's so noisy which is which is really fascinating and it may it may indeed you know sort of slightly turn it on its head i suppose as to who the winners are because it won't just be about who's got the largest amount of real estate potentially um and I think maybe I'm a bit more attuned to it than, I, than I've previously been um, this year. I don't know, but perhaps because we've been talking about it so much. I mean, I've been, mm. I've been tracking Black Friday for the best part of 10 years, actually, because of my job. But um, I do really feel as though it's more significant this year than ever. Um, again, the business of fashion says this is because brands have a really complicated task this time because of COVID. Um, and that's not just about the volume of stock that they've got to ship. It's because of the fact they've already been offering these deep markdowns for months to get rid of that product. Yeah. So actually, it's not really standing apart to suddenly offer new markdowns again. So the average discount in May apparently was the same or similar to previous Black Friday sales. That's according to Edited. So we've already seen that kind of volume of discounting. And some more stats from Edited, they say that in October in the US, the average discount advertised was 40 and 50% versus 20 to 30% this time last year. So we're seeing bigger markdowns than ever. And that's, I don't know, that's really nuts to me. You know, there's a slight sort of air of desperation about the whole thing, isn't there? But it's understandable, of course. So yeah, that survival piece, I guess, is the, is the really important piece for brands for brands this year and um and i guess actually for businesses of all sizes in an industry who that has really suffered with falling sales throughout 2020 and i, I know you've got a perspective on on that balance in many ways yeah it, and it is a balance and let's not forget what that first statistic i mentioned this idea of survival for retail yeah. um so let's share the facts traditional retail is in crisis even the success stories of lockdown will be facing challenges. For some, Black Friday is part of that survival strategy. With multiple lockdowns, the conclusion of our focus session was that e-commerce is the new flagship store. And that speaks to the stats that I mentioned at the beginning from Clavio, that e-commerce is 90% now as opposed to 70% at the beginning of lockdown. So this is a territory where consumer savvy and hunger for bargains reigns. So what I think is really significant now that we're talking online as the new flagship is that at the click of a button, you can do price comparison really effectively. You can also be turned off really quickly. You have far less commitment than you would if you were going into a flagship store. It's, it's a more, it's a less loyal space, I suppose. So how do brands strike the balance between taking advantage of, as Clavio predicts, the biggest Black Friday yet, and sensitivity to the consumer mindset? This comes back to the Brand Purpose Live that Rachel and I hosted a couple of weeks ago. You can find it on our Instagram TV. Uh, brands must have their values crystal clear this year. Sitting alongside that, there are brands, uh, no, sitting alongside that, I should say, these are brands, they are not non-profit organizations. Yeah. So let's not forget the commercial bottom line on which they are judged. And yes, again, this opens up a whole other debate around whether brands should be measured for, with profit at all or whether they should use something called the triple bottom line, um, taking into account their social and environmental efforts. Now, that's another topic. Again, it's, it's on uh, one of our IGTVs, um, Sustainability Post-Pandemic. Do go check it out. But really today i think what we need to focus on is is black friday is a tradition of retail so we must focus on traditional business models in today's conversations and those are ones driven by profit the balance has to be struck between the participation and empathetic marketing around that to not participate would be to remove the brand from the annual global shopping event. And it really is the annual global shopping event now. Forget, I mean, I'm a child of the 80s. It used to be about the January sales. I mean, January sales are all over by then now. This is the one. Um, yeah, Rachel, do you, do you think this can be done in a way that takes sustainability into account? It's the big question. Yeah, I mean, I think it has to is the, is the short version, but obviously it's way more nuanced and, nuanced and complex than that. I think firstly to say everything you've said is so important about the role of fashion mash and I wanted to address this because 
as an, as an organization, we're really about shaping the future of the fashion industry, right? We're about enabling conversations and we're about helping to move the industry forward. And this is why I love this topic so much, although it, it goes against so much of what I believe in, in my day to day world, like the sort of thought of thinking about Black Friday kind of makes me shudder a little bit. But I love this conversation because it's really at the crux of what we're facing in all sense. And that's just that this almost existential crisis of like, can we talk about sustainability as well as commerciality? Because we're too afraid to put those sentences together, those two things together. And we've had really interesting responses around exactly this from some of it, surrounding some of our messaging about Black Friday over the past week mm -hmm. or two, um, particularly around that idea of survival and, and using sort of Black Friday as the as the jumping off point for exactly exactly that. And it's unsurprising because a lot of the people that have kind of come back to us in this way work in the sustainability sector. People are upset about the idea that we would push such forms of consumerism. But it really is the ultimate challenge. And we're so aware of that. Our poll literally split, as you said, Rosanna, straight down the middle between survival for retail, disaster for the planet, 49%, 51%, as you said, probably would flip the other way very readily if we were to do it again and vice versa. And um, that's not because we have people in our community that only care about revenues. Believe me, like far from it. It's because we have to do both right now. That is the future of this industry. It's sustainable business. It's not sustainable non-business. And I think like that's such a crucial thing that we actually really pay attention to here. And I think, I guess my point that I'm trying to make is that sustainability doesn't mean the end of fashion at all. It means a change in consumerism, a change in consumer behavior, change in consumption models absolutely of course it means a change in production as well all of those things everything has to come into effect and in, in every sense but it doesn't mean that we don't celebrate fashion fashion is massively something to be celebrated if anything it's such an empowering industry to be in and such an empowering part of everybody's individual lives in terms of self-identity and the way it's all you know tied up in what we wear that it could be a real force for good within the change that we really need so for me at this time of year supporting the right type of business and it definitely needs to be the right type is absolutely crucial so it needs to be more responsible ones it needs to be small ones it needs to be local community efforts new business models all of the above all the things that we talk about all of the time because it's of course not the big brands that struggle in all of this you know they're not the one and it's, some of them have obviously but that's not just because of covid that's for, for a lot of you know ongoing larger issues it's the ones that are small it's the ones that are operating on a shoestring and it's the ones that are really trying to change the game so i massively get the view of cancelling black friday and it's so key to show the mega companies that we as consumers don't want it but we do really need to support sustainable business in their place and i think that is so so crucial so if we look back at 2020 through that marketing lens, and again, we've had so many interesting conversations about what marketing has looked like this year. Or actually, even if we take marketing aside, even if we look at sort of a more sort of macro, from more macro strategy view as well, the buzzwords really have this year been about community and they've been about giving, or they certainly should have been. And that's through whatever lens you look at it, you know, not just COVID, but all of the other things that have happened this year. And we've heard amazing stories from our community over the last, um, you know, what has it been, eight, eight months or so, around yeah. how they've been approaching yeah. those subjects. And that's made me super happy. And I know it has you as well. Like we've heard incredible anecdotes of the way that people have been operating and the things that they've been doing to really put those things first. And the fact is that is more important than ever, you know, and, and that very notion is the exact element of sustainability that really counts as well. Um, and that really matters. And of course, I mean that from both an environmental and a social point of view. So it's interesting. I think the challenge here, and I do myself personally massively sit in the camp of like, please don't buy anything new. Please don't buy more. Let's please change the way consumerism is underpinning our very notion of what, you know, society or the way society operates. But the, the challenge in all of that is how to ensure, ensure survival in a way that respects the citizen in all of us and not just the consumer. So we know how many of our community right now, for instance, are absolutely up against it to hit numbers, but that's a product of the system that they're in. You know, that's part and parcel of, of this, this world that we operate in. And we need to change the whole system and not just individual things. What I really like about BOF's coverage of all of this has been this idea of breaking the cycle. I think it's a really nice little addition to one of the articles they, they wrote earlier, uh, last week rather, 
Um, and they said the best Black Friday promotion may be no promotion at all. Um, and they say for retailers that managed to slim down their inventories now that have managed to slim down their inventory, sorry, now be, may be the time to begin to wean customers off the addiction to deep markdowns. And I should add here just really quickly, just because you don't call it Black Friday doesn't mean you're also not doing this. I was telling Rosanna earlier, and I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but in quite a few of the messages I've been targeted with, I've noticed they've not been saying Black Friday at all. They've been saying things like Christmas comes early and still offering a discount. I think that's super interesting. It's kind of trying to skirt around the whole, we're not doing Black Friday thing, but basically still doing the exact same thing. Mm. Um, and I think to BOS point, the key here is that no promotion doesn't mean no marketing. You know, it means no discounting. And there's a really, really big difference in all of this massively. Um, and we've seen this happen, you know, that, uh, that idea of being clever with your marketing in, in many, many ways for quite a few years now, particularly when you look at obviously the brands that are more sustainable inclined. So of course, the Patagonia is the really obvious one with the don't buy this jacket campaign, obviously now years ago, but indeed then lots of others have followed suit. And the main way they used to do so was of course by closing their stores and allowing their workers to spend time with their family on Thanksgiving and Black Friday and everything else. And they'd take out huge one-page adverts in, in the New York Times for this, wouldn't they? Some, yeah, that exactly. That has been done before, hugely, you know, yeah. And mm. they, they then make sure that on um, any sales that do happen that day online, you know, proceeds go to certain causes and everything else. So there's lots of really positive things to do. But of course, that's still marketing, you know. It's really interesting. That whole shutting the stores thing obviously can't be done this year. And what I like about yeah. that in some ways, though, it's really negative, obviously. But what, what's good about that from a marketer's point of view is that we're having to be really clever. There's a lot of massive creativity that's that's going on with initiatives. Um, and I know you've been, you know, as a marketer yourself, you've been tracking a lot of, of these initiatives that are sort of peaking um, editorial coverage this year, right? Can you, can you share some of those? Yeah. I also just wanted to share well, two asides. From personal experience, first of all, when I was at Matthew Williamson probably six years ago, Black Friday was a high street phenomenon. And I remember yeah. we, uh, it, w it wasn't actually me who first proposed that we should participate. It was um, another of the directors. I think it was the finance director, goes without saying. And, um, and when she proposed it, it was, a re you know, it was something that we all really put close consideration to because it was associating a luxury brand with a high street phenomenon. But then that year, yeah. obviously, the sales were outstanding. Um, and that year also a lot of luxury brands started doing it. So that was an interesting tipping point six years ago. Um, and then just another reflection I wanted to share is I think we're already seeing an interesting differentiation in views between me and Rachel. So my view, perhaps because of my marketing background, is this idea of it's a day where it's a celebration of retail globally to to not participate is to miss out whereas rachel very powerfully has put that actually if we need to disrupt this no participation whether that's i'm about to mention some kind of marketing style participation rachel saying no participation and no discounting so i love it when we have a little bit of a debate um yeah right. although it's, a lot of your examples are you know they are they're not discounting i haven't said no marketing no, no, i think it's very, right. it's very it's very it's very clever i see yeah. okay okay well, let's so they're trying to my, shift let's people. Let's go to my examples and everybody it's, can I mean, it's, what they it's, think. Just to add, just say one last thing. It's kind of nuts, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because in many ways, we are crediting these people for being more sustainable because they're not embracing Black Friday in a typical way of driving discounts. But actually, they're still marketing in a sense that makes yeah. you feel strong, more strongly about the brand and therefore you're more likely to spend with them. So it's a bit of a, you know, it's the classic story of like, if you're Patagonia, is the best thing to do potentially is that you just stop existing altogether. And actually, their argument is that they need to set an example for the way that businesses can operate differently instead. So it's it is super interesting. I know I, I, I won't steal your thunder, but I know there's one brand particularly who has done a very clever thing with this in terms of, you know, making people spend money, but doing it in a very positive way by actually changing yeah. the entire strategy. Yeah. So let's divulge our, our, our trio that caught my eye. Um, so how to participate in a meaningful way. That's what it really all comes down to. That adds value to your brand gains the attention of the consumer and perhaps even catches the media's eye for a game-changing, disruptive stance on tradition. So first of all, all birds who have chosen to raise prices. Their ethos for the day is break tradition, not the planet. Very catchy. 
On 27th of November, all prices across the entire collection will increase by one pound and be matched by one pound from the brand, with the additional proceeds going directly to Fridays for Future, the youth-led international climate movement founded by climate activist, activist Greta Thunberg. So in terms of headline grabbing, it's pretty good. When the rest of the world discounts, all birds is raising their prices. And then they're giving to a brilliant charity with a renowned spokesperson at its helm. As Rachel said, we're talking about it. It's getting us talking. It's seriously good marketing. That is undeniable. The next one, um, which caught my eye, particularly because we were speaking about social justice last week on our Instagram Live, Birdsong, which is a brilliant sustainable brand I'm sure lots of you are aware of, they are giving consumers the option. And that is why actually last year, so they started this initiative last year, it's called Transparent Friday, um, and it is award-winning. It won Draper's Sustainable Consumer Engagement Campaign of the Year last year, or rather this year. Um, they show customers exactly who makes, who packs um, their clothes, how much each of those people earn, how much the CEO earns, and the true cost of the garment. Once the customer has read that, if they choose to read it, of course, they can then decide to take off 15%, to take off 10%, or indeed to add a tip and not have any mm -hmm. discount at all. They put the power in the consumer consumer's hands. I love that idea and I love the transparency of it. Then finally, my wardrobe HQ. I hope that lots of you saw my interview with its chair, Jane Shepherdson, a couple of weeks ago. So they are obviously an integral part of what well, they are heavily involved in the circular economy of fashion and they have a social media awareness campaign um, as as a rental and, and resale platform. Their key message to drive was that it should be turn black. Sorry, turn black Friday green. Okay. They've teamed up with Blue Marine Foundation for this. And they're seeing influencers getting the word out to think before you buy and remember that good design is sustainable design. Um, a percentage of their profits from rental and resale on that day will go to Blue Marine Foundation. But really what that one is coming down to is just driving what they hope will be a viral social media message. So I really like those three examples. One, raise prices. Two, social media awareness, or rather, sorry, I've done the wrong order. One, raise prices. Two, put the power in the consumer's hands. Or three, drive social media awareness and just get people to think about shopping more responsibly. Rachel, do you have any more examples for me? Yeah, I've got one actually that I was just thinking about um, that I'd spotted through Adja Barber's um, Instagram mm. account. I'm sure many of you know Adja. Um, so she has a partnership with Laura Jean, which is a um, sustainable lifestyle yeah. brand. Um, a fashion collection and they've just done something really interesting it's very straightforward but basically um, with every single discount that they offer they are topping up the wages of the makers um, so actually the money goes directly back to the people that are making their collections and Adja did a really powerful post about this and she said Bulgaria where we make our pieces is not the exception to the rule in terms of the cancellation of orders and obviously in this country we've had the government supporting the furlough scheme and that hasn't happened in other markets so they're making sure that they um, you know, give money back to those garment workers. So again, just a really, I guess, mm -hmm. important way of demonstrating that this year, um, you know, that extra support is needed and to try and find those, find those businesses, I guess, where the money really is going to the right place, I think says yeah. a heck of a lot. And I see so many people are agreeing with us here and saying, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, liking to give, give um, the brand, sorry, who give the discount instead as proceeds to charity. Exactly. And I think it's just about really finding ones that, that we, that we all believe in massively and um yeah shopping responsibly and i also just wanted to mention sadie from my wardrobe made an amazing um comment earlier she said um it's important to the economy that we spend and we don't boycott but we can spend more responsibly with better choices um so yeah for me it's around really supporting supporting the supporting the right types indeed so I mean, I feel like we could we could talk about this for so long, couldn't we? Because there is so much nuance to it. And I think, you know, particularly around just that particular debate, that nuance of the should we promote Black Friday or not, consumerism or not, sustainability 
obviously yes but you know or not in this context etc we could go on for a really long time i think hopefully we've, we've covered the crux of it so yeah over, over to questions if anybody has any i know rosanna i think you had some sent in in advance as well i did i did um i love the organized people who send them in dm us in <laughs> so the first one we have is from jade ellen uh she sent it via instagram uh the question is and everybody i should also say do just give your questions to the comments now. Um, it's been difficult to, there've been so many interactions this time, which I have loved, but it's been difficult. If, if you sent it earlier, it would be great if you could add it now, just so Rachel and I can have a proper look because we're now focusing on the comments section rather than each other's, each other's eyes. Um, <laughs> that sounded really weird. Right, <laughs> question from Jane oh, Ellen. Do you think Black Friday will cease to exist in 10 years time with the growth of Generation Z? I mean, I think it depends what portion of Generation Z you look at, doesn't it? I'm sure. I, I mean, Rosanna, you you quite often reference that article that was written. Was it in the New York Times? Yeah. Shall I? I mean, so my stance on this, actually, if I'm really, if I were gonna put money on this, I would say it's less than ten years time. I think the stats. Do you? That, yeah, I do. So the stats that we mentioned at the beginning. I'm just gonna scroll back from our little Instagram poll. The fact that. Um, in regards to its future, the majority of our audience said that it needs to develop. Um, equally, uh, the majority of our audience said that Black Friday devalues brands. I feel that, yeah, the article I always quote is by Elizabeth Patton, New York Times. Um, she spoke to, uh, a, now this was pre-pandemic, but the generation said that she uh, spoke to and polled all said that they're into this throwaway culture, wear it once, never wear it again. Um, but then, and very fast fashion driven, but the phenomenon we've seen this year, they are now rebranded the Depop generation, aren't they? And the um, idea is that actually there's far more creativity buying secondhand, there's far more excitement, and that fast fashion's obsession is waning with Generation Z. In which case, Black Friday, is that going to be a thing that they also think is a bit past it and something that their parents do to buy a cheap television? Perhaps. Um, so if I were to put money on it, I would say that certainly under this name, under this guise, I think in 10 years time, it's not going to be around. Maybe. Do you know what? You've completely taken me by surprise there. I didn't think you would say that. Um, that's really interesting. I mean, I think it's the name, I like Rachel. I think it's the name has, it, the name, it needs a good PR. Black Friday, <laughs> hire a good PR. Black Friday needs some PR work. I mean, yeah, I suppose if, not just the name then, you know, the whole notion of this like mega markdown moment. Mm. For me, so I guess first, first I'd say, we have no choice, but this industry needs to change within the next 10 years. That's our timeline, right? 2030 is our cost off in terms of major, major issues with the, the, the climate emergency. So yes, in an ideal world, completely gone, but that is only in the context of the entire system of fashion itself changing. And that's, that's what are crucial, right? The whole, the whole game has to evolve. So it's not as simple as like, Black Friday ceases to exist. It's that the whole system of fashion, the whole the whole model of the, the we operate under currently, mm -hmm. and actually, I would even argue, you know, more broadly than that, the entire sort of societal construct that we are in, uh, you know, in terms of measuring like GDP growth as our standard, also has to change within that time frame. In which case, Black Friday shifts itself really massively. So it's. Yeah, I think it's I think it is a very nuanced one. I think Gen Z is such an important topic within all of this. As you rightly said, there's that article in the New York Times and then there's the Depop generation. I think the other piece of this and the bit that I think gives me like concern like makes me feel very concerned about all of it and not as hopeful as I think you are, mm -hmm. is that you know, this year we saw this huge issue around um Boohoo, you know, that that um the the issue in leicester yeah. and, and obviously them of one one of many examples of, of, of issues happening down the supply chain but using that one as the example because obviously the one that was the most public of all of them that happened and immediately we saw boohoo's share prices like 
dive, taking a massive nosedive, understandably, negative press, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and actually much more nuanced in terms of the issues around there in terms of the way that, um, you know, we even see like the markup of finance and everything. But what was very interesting about this is when you look at the company now, they are doing more in sales than they've ever done before. I think they've predicted something like 32% growth this year compared to what they were expecting of 25%. So the, the share price is going up and up. The founders, the owners, um, the senior management have made more money than imaginable by the very notion of this sale, this share price dip and then rise again. So, you know, that business is literally full steam ahead. And that is because people continue to buy it. No end. And, and that obviously is a very young, very disposable fashion mindset that we're seeing. So for me, that has to change too. And I don't think it's just... It's not just the Depop generation that's going to be able to, to make enough of a shift. We have to have that wider mass consumer shift as well, which doesn't just come down to the consumer. Obviously, it comes down to business, comes down to policy, which we've talked about those before and is, of course, a completely different topic, but super important in this context. So, yeah, 10 year time frame. I think we have no choice but it to change. But I don't think it's just about us like looking at the through the lens of black friday and thinking how do we change that it has to be about how do we change this whole system of our industry because the whole thing is broken and i don't even think the conversations this year about resetting the industry have been big enough it's not just about markdowns those are not the only issues it's much much bigger than that but i'll stop because i'll <laughs> keep i'll go into a huge rant um but yeah we've got uh, some interesting yeah yeah interesting go comments ahead. through alistair I like what you say. There will always be a race to win the spend of the last paycheck before Christmas. Yeah. Of course, this falls at a really interesting point in the calendar, doesn't it? Like, let's not forget that a lot of this is buying for gifts. And particularly this year, when physical interaction is going to be nigh on, well, it's, it's likely to be, it's, it's going to be very unlikely at any scale. Sending something in the post, sending a gift is really important. And if you can pick up something that you wouldn't normally be able to board, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, there is the positive take on that. Then um, Sadie gave a little wave when I said Black Friday needs a PR, which is excellent. Thank you for that, Sadie. <laughs> um, a PR always knows good PR. And then uh, Lisa, um, she said, for me, it's about responsible consumerism. I don't want to shop in a way that will further harm the environment. Um, I couldn't agree more. So actually, I have a question to finish with today. Rachel, what are you going to be doing on Black Friday? This is what I mean, working. <laughs> okay, right, well, working. It's a busy day. No, do you know what? I'm going to answer you with a, a slightly wider question, a slightly wider answer, and that is how I am going to do my gift shopping this year because I've been thinking okay. about this a lot. And that is that normally I go for ease because, you know, scheduling and everything else, yeah. and it's about cramming it all in at the last minute. This year, my whole family has actually decided to scale back on gift giving because we always are very generous because we all love it so much and it's such mm. a special time of year and everything else. But actually this year we've decided that we don't all need so much stuff and we're all being a little bit more cautious. And obviously this has been a tough year all round. Um, but more importantly, I've also made the decision with my other half that we are really actively going to try and shop local as much as we can because obviously shops are reopening next week. Mm -hmm. We have amazing shops near us, loads of secondhand ones. Um, everybody knows that they're supposed to buy secondhand for our little one. Um, really importantly, we, do, we really try and <laughs> ram that home to our family members that he doesn't need brand new plastic toys. Um, actually, some secondhand wooden blocks is great. Um, I sent the exact <laughs> message to my family WhatsApp group. I was like, no more toys. No more toys. No more, and definitely no more new toys. toys. Like, yeah, it's just it's too much stuff. So we're going to try and really shop less and shop local. And I think I think importantly, really support those businesses near us. Somebody earlier on, and sorry, it was a little while back, so I can't remember who it was. Let me see if I can quickly see. Oh yeah, Feast Magazine said, lots of small brands don't have e-commerce sites yeah. and they're being forgotten about this Black Friday in the UK due to lockdown, which will send lots of people to Amazon. And I totally agree, that's a huge concern. I had an amazing experience about, um, uh, just a couple of days ago, one of the stores on, I live near Northcote Road in South London and a store there, they do have an e-commerce site, but it's quite basic and they didn't have the item that I wanted that I was seeing in the window. So I emailed the owner of the store because it is a local store that um, is really focused on like buying better things. Um, it's a pair of boots that I really need because I don't have any boots to walk <laughs> my son to nursery in the morning. I keep getting wet feet because it is um, raining all the time. Anyway, um, I don't need to justify why I'm buying boots, but I am. And 
amazing response because of course she wants the sale so she's then going out of her way to try and source me this particular item in my size that's in the store window so my point being like when you have those experiences with local people there's so much more of a community element to it and they're going to try their hardest to really actually mm. support you in return and and i love that because that sense of community is like nothing else so yeah no more of this sort of nameless nameless experience i think is lovely Thank you for that context, right. Rachel. So, I what about you? I haven't asked you back. Tell me. Oh, yours. um. Well, will I be shopping on this Black Friday? No. I wish I could give. No. Uh, have I ever shopped on a Black Friday though? No, I don't think I have. It's actually not something that I get particularly into. I'm actually turned off by it. Um, probably for all. Gosh, I used to all the time. Yeah, I think maybe for all of the reasons that I've discussed at length on, on our lives before, I'm kind of turned off. The moment I personally feel that everybody's doing something, I get really turned off by it and want to do the exact opposite. Um, so <laughs> I, I will be, if I have any spare time on Friday, I'll be going for a long walk and I'll find a thought-provoking podcast on consumerism to listen to about instead. And then I'll share that with you all on my stories. And I can say, this is how I'm spending Black Friday. Um, That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm, I'm right behind what Rachel was saying. Shop local, shop secondhand, um, I think. But, you know, let's all just think about consuming more responsibly and not just giving into those big behemoth brands for convenience. Because I do hear Rachel on the convenience side of things. You know, we're all busy. And I did tend to just get my Christmas shopping done in a few clicks in an hour yeah. between meetings in the past. So I need to avoid that admittedly yeah. i now have a baby so time is precious but i'll get that um right well thank you everyone for joining the interactions today have been so fascinating and um yeah there's going to be lots more to think about so do you know dm us any more comments or thoughts we'll be sharing this on our instagram tv in a couple of days and um big thank you to clavio for particularly because they gave us a lot of statistics to back up and make our thoughts even more uh, stimulating than usual so thank you all very much indeed one final thing from me Rosanna has mentioned our next pioneer on December 8th before that we have our November 1 November 30th Dr Helen Crowley if you're interested in sustainability this one is all about biodiversity so it's about uh, regenerating ecosystems and protecting um, species from extinction through the fashion industry should be really really fascinating please join us you can find tickets in our link in bio thank you so much everyone for being here Thank you guys. Happy Black Friday. <laughs>